the same 11 that beat Arsenal 15 days ago. In the interim, of course, Dean Kiley and Mark Kinsella have been on international duty with Ireland, and they've returned elated and unscathed from Tehran. They're two of the six full internationals in the starting lineup, and if they continue to progress, Scott Parker and Paul Koncheski could be future internationals. Koncheski, a recognised left back, is impressed with his adaptability to various roles this season. Yes, you're right. Uh, there's no surprise. They've kept the same side. They won't get any better victories this year than a, a win at Highbury. You see there the, the back four. It consists of uh, three central defenders with Luke Young playing as a right back. Chris Powell playing as a left back there. He, he normally likes to get forward and of course today he'll be given the opportunity to go whenever he wants to because in front of him, if we can just move on, He's got another left back in young Paul Koncheski. So if Pearl wants to go, Koncheski will always tuck back in and give protection and just drop into that left back position whenever he feels fit to do. In the centre of the park, Jensen, Kinsella and Parker, three central midfield players. Parker will be asked to keep the shape on the right hand side. And if we just move on forward, Johansson and Newell. I think Johansson will probably like to drift to the right hand side. So. That can often become a five in midfield. He likes to play most of his football in wide areas. johansson has got great pace. And Jason Yule will be the furthest forward, at times just being the sole striker. West Ham welcome back Thomas Repka after suspension, but are dealt two major blows with Freddie Canuti and Nigel Winterburn, both out with hamstring injuries. The two players who replaced them are well known to Charlton fans. Paul Kitson, starting a league game for West Ham for the first time in 21 months, was on loan here two seasons ago, while Scott Minto returns to the club where his professional career began. And it's good to see long-term absentee Steve Lomas back on the bench, along with Joe Cole. Yes, you mentioned one or two, Rob, they're coming back onto the bench. I think if you look at West Ham's season so far, they've been uh, troubled with injuries, and I think they're looking to try and get the right blend. At the back here, we've got Repka, Fox and Daly, three strong physical players uh, in wide areas. I think Shemo is naturally an attacking player. He will look to get forward as often as possibly can. I think Minto is more of a, a defensive left-sided player. If we move on into the midfield, three very good players there Sinclair Hutchinson and Carrick probably this is the strength of the side I think Michael Carrick a player I know from my days when I was at Birmingham he was on loan to us he's developed into an outstanding player in a possibility that he may even go to the World Cup he's certainly played well enough for the under 21s I see him as the uh, the deepest of the three midfield players the one who likes to get on the ball he's an outstanding passer and a great striker of the ball Don Hutchinson wherever he goes he scores goals, he'll be looking to get forward into the penalty box. And Sinclair normally plays in a wide area, but he's got a lot of versatility to his play. A predominantly attacking player. I think that's a good blend in midfield. Up front, well, we don't see Canuti, but it's an opportunity for Kitson to come into the side. I think he'll play as the furthest forward of the two strikers. Di Canio, what can you say about him? Unpredictable but immensely talented. I expect him to drop back into areas where he can play as he sees fit to play. I think he doesn't play often as a, an out-and-out -out striker, but he likes to drop back into deep areas. He'll go wide on the left, he'll go wide on the right. He'll play all over the front of the park. West Ham United preparing for yet another London derby. Paolo Di Canio, and in front of him, 10-year-old Billy Johnston there, masked tonight, and his uh, grandfather Les, I gather, hasn't been too well, so hope it cheers you up, Les, to see your boy playing his part in leading out the West Ham team at the Valley this evening. Say so another London derby for West Ham, they faced Chelsea and Fulham recently, a win and a defeat in those games. The last thing Charlton needed after their win at Arsenal was a fortnight's break. But they come back looking to pick up where they left off then. Join us for all the action live from the Valley after the break. If you want to go interactive, that's Sky Sports Extra Channel 404. Fan zone amongst the various features there. Uh, representing Charlton tonight, Matt Goss. And it's Graham Howlett commentating for West Ham. Uh, by the way, if you um, are watching on Sky Digital and you want to clear your screen of the quiz logo at the bottom right-hand side of the picture, just press back up on the remote and that will get rid of it. If you want to test your sports knowledge, then press that red button. 
Let's go to the Valley and join our match commentators Trevor Francis and Rob Hawthorne. And West Ham fans in both dugouts tonight. Glenn Roder, the lifelong fan who achieved the lifelong fan's ambition by getting the manager's job in the summer. And his counterpart, Alan Kirbishley, who was linked with the vacancy but achieved a childhood ambition to play for the club and has admitted that he's had to find tickets for some of his relatives in the West Ham end of this ground tonight. Charlton's Irish international Mark Kinsella becomes the first subject of player camp for Sky Digital viewers tonight. It will be Charlton to get this FA Barclay card premiership clash underway. Only the 25th league meeting of these two London rivals. Charlton with 10 victories, West Ham with 6 on their record. Here's England's Chris Powell. Left to Hayden Fox. Now Don Hutchison. In comes Mark Fish. And the first line flag is up against Jason Yule. It's nine years next month since Charlton's return to the Valley after six years of sharing first Selhurst Park and then having a further year at Upton Park. And the ground is being redeveloped impressively now. Daly out to Scott Minto, facing his old club. Back by Kinsella to Luke Young, challenged by Don Hutchison. Rob, just a word about the two teams. They've lined up exactly as we uh, spoke about prior to the game. This was a game that I watched last season here at the Valley, and uh, if tonight's half as good as that, we're in for a great night. On that evening, West Ham in particular, Paolo Di Canio played exceptionally well. 1-1 draw, Bartlett and Di Canio, the goal scorers. I'm looking forward to tonight, should be a good game. Memorable effort as well from Di Canio, aren't they all? His avenge, of course, to a degree. Charlton's 5-0 uh, defeat at Upton Park just a few weeks earlier on Boxing Day last season. Jason Yule, and away was by Repka. Repka leaving the free kick for Hayden Fox to take. It's a surprise to some that he's lining up for West Ham tonight. He got a groin injury in the match against Fulham that ruled him out of the Australian squad for the uh, first leg of their World Cup playoff against Uruguay, which takes place tomorrow morning our time but the Australian FA quite happy to uh, let him play on for West Ham Di Canio getting the ball across and the flick on was by Kitson that's what I'm talking about with Di Canio he'll drift into wide areas puts in a good ball little flick on from Kitson I think it was Don Hutchinson coming at the far post Paul Kitson's last goal was actually uh, for Charlton during the uh, loan spell he had here in their first division title winning season. Here's Sebastian Schemmel, now Sinclair, Di Canio, Kitson helping it on in the direction of uh, Trevor Sinclair. Here's Kitson! Oh, what a way! to mark his return to the valley Paul Kitson scores what an unbelievable start for Kitson but just look at the ball that Di Canio plays outside of his right foot terrific pick out Kitson great drive in off the post it's a great strike what a start for him he really does take it well, gets his body over it, keeps it nice and low. Healy absolutely no chance, assisted by the post, but really was a great strike. It's Kitson's first league goal for West Ham in over two and a half years since he scored against another of his old clubs, Newcastle. And now he's uh, returned to the Valley, where he scored once in a six-match spell for Charlton and scores against them. Big opportunity tonight for Kitson, only in the team because Freddie Canuti is injured. And what a way to vindicate Glenn Roder's decision to put him in. 
ahead of another former Charlton man, Jermaine Defoe, who's on the bench. But he's asked for a better start. Schemmel, Di Canio. Here's Trevor Sinclair, who's kept his place in the team despite some outspoken comments about his uh, wishes to get away. Hutchison leaving it for Carrick. Now Di Canio. He can just steer it in again to Paul Kitson. Canio aiming to make room for himself. It's Kinsella who gets it away. It's the perfect pick-me-up for West Ham, who lost their last game against Fulham after a good se sequence of three straight wins. And the run is a good one by Yule. He's managed to stay onside and he's pulled it behind the player in the middle. Johansson. Certainly good play there from Charlton. Excellent ball from Klaus Jensen. Good run from Yule. Unfortunately, there wasn't quick enough support. Just Johansson in the penalty box. Johansson again. Tacanio. Hutchison. Schemmel. Sinclair. Looking to combine with Tacanio. He's got to try and shrug off Konczewski. And it was Fish who came across with the challenge. Once again, the Canyon involved, very prevalent in the opening six minutes, lovely one-two with Sinclair, Fish comes across, Tommy interception. Canio getting across the corner. Paolo De Canio again. Schemmel moving up on the outside of him. He's trying to get inside Konczewski here, and he goes down, he's won the free kick. It's a very positive start by West Ham. Well, there's one or two complaints from Konczewski, but um, I think Di Canio was slightly too clever for him. Definitely a free kick. Well, he's uh, never one to undersell an injury, is he, Paolo Di Canio? Dean Kiley, who's conceded one already, now facing a free kick. Hutchison and Minto both in attendance. Carrick is there as well. If we look at the back post there, Rob, Charlton is slightly outnumbered. Now they've adjusted, they've got three against three. Lined up for Carrick to hit one and he got it through. Here's Klaus Jens. Vincesky. Give it away to Sinclair. Casual play by Charlton, but they've won it back. This is Parker. And he's gone for the hit himself. Always going away from the target. Yeah, and Chrissy Pearl's absolutely furious because he's shouting on the left-hand side. They had an overload on the left-hand side, not just Pearl. Gibson only gone free. I think the young boy Parker is slightly ambitious. What was he, fully 35 yards out, doesn't trouble his lot. But certainly this start is unsettled, Cholton. Well, a lot of people uh, looked with surprise at the result that Charlton achieved at Arsenal, but let's not forget they went a goal down in that game. It could have been three or four down before they finally struck back with the equaliser. They've uh, made lives hard for themselves again. Here's Powell. Kinsella. Johansson making the run. Daly getting across with it. Rob, you mentioned they went a goal behind the Arsenal. I had a long chat with Alan Kirby before the game, and one of the points that he raised in the discussion was that uh, 
was particularly concerned with the way they've been starting, especially at home in recent games. They've been very slow starters. The last thing he wanted was to lose a goal as early as this after three minutes today. They've lost uh, three times already at home this season, Alan Kirbish and his team. Everton on the opening day of the season, which the Charlton management felt was a very unrepresentative performance. And Liverpool leads have won here since, as indeed they did last season. So this may be more of a barometer of Charlton's home form. And they need to recover from the early setback of that Paul Kitson goal. Don Hutchison. Given away to Fish. It's Luke Young. joined West Ham originally as their reserve team coach and was surprised in some respects to uh, get the job after Harry Redknapp's departure went on record as saying that uh, he thought it would go to a more high profile candidate Steve McLaren seemed to be the first choice and Alan Kirbishley was linked for a long time with the role there were many who were here for Charlton's last game of last season against Liverpool believing it would be Kirbishley's last game in charge and that he would make the move to Upton Park the break on but uh, well taken there's uh, Parker who got in the shot that's good play this actually Kinsella isn't it drives the ball towards goal straight down the throat of Big Hislop not a problem for him Johansson the target from the clearance but Daly gets there Sinclair Carrick now Don Hutchison he's got Kitson available just to his left and Kitson goes for the quick return, no foul on Hutchison. Clear to Jensen. This is Luke Young. Repka climbing behind uh, Jason Ewell. So it's Repka who's had a, a fitful start in English football to say the least. Sent off twice in five West Ham appearances. And followed that up of course with a, a sending off for the Czech Republic against Belgium that's uh, prompted him to consider his international future for the criticism that he's taken in his homeland since. It's Mark Kinsella. Kincheski. And out by Repka. Well, it's the first time I've seen Repka, Rob, and uh, the one thing that stands out is that uh, Seems very, very good in the air. He's got a terrific spring. I wouldn't say he's any more than six foot, but uh, certainly the balls from deep areas from Charlton have to be measured into the uh, either the chest or the feet of the front players because what Charlton don't have, of course, is Big Bartlett. He's such a good head of the ball. And Johansson and you have got players who really need it into their feet. They're not going to relish balls up there where they have to fight against the heading ability of Fox and Repka. was in uh, Brussels to see Thomas Repka in international action and felt that he was particularly unlucky to get the uh, sending off of what was judged to have been an elbowing offence. Here's Chris Powell and Mark Kinsella who played only in the second leg of uh, Ireland's World Cup playoff against Iran. Klaus Jensen. Jason Yule giving away to Fox. This is Sinclair. Shemel. Repka. Michael Carrick. There you see the interchange that was on about. In that situation there, Konczewski quite comfortable to play as the left back, allowing Chris Pell now to play on the left of midfield. They've rotated, I think you'll see this quite often during the course of the game. And Konczewski in the deeper position. Now Yule. Yes. Parker. The shirt pulling. 
referee Alan Wiley. Henson's free kick. Fish got forward for it. Number one that was going to trouble Shaka Hislop. Hislop an ever-present in the West Ham team despite the return to fitness now of David James who again is on the substitutes bench. James who was injured playing for England before making his West Ham debut. Here's Klaus Jensen. Canio's layoff not coming off. Carrick. And a change of subject for player cam, and it's the goal scorer Paul Kitson who moves into the focus for Sky Digital viewers on Channel 404. As you can imagine Glenn Roder coming to the game tonight, busy disappointed that his top goal scorer from last year, Freddie Canuti, was absent through uh, injury. Yet a little busy you know that after three minutes, his replacement puts him in the lead. And what a great start he's given them. Sinclair here to try and improve the position. It's Kitson again! Good save by Kylie. And Sinclair battling and pressing to try and get it in. But Charlton there grateful to the reactions of their goalkeeper. Once again, an excellent one-two. Kitson comes off his mark of fish. And very nearly gets his second goal. It's a good save low down from Kylie. There's one or two complaints. The referee allowed play to continue. Uh, the Canio's corner. Here's Parker. Classians. De Canio. And away by Paul Konchesky. Well the, West, well, the West Ham players were happy with the throw, but the Charlton players, Alan, uh, Rob, sorry, were furious. But certainly if Kitson's shot had gone in, the goal would have stood. It took a good save from uh, Kylie in the end to deny Kitson. But this is what they were complaining about. You now you see Sinclair in possession. Well, I think what they're claiming, that's a foul throw. The hand goes up from Koncheski, he doesn't go with the runner, Sinclair, he gets in behind, and very nearly, Kitson made it too. And Jensen thought he was fouled there, but again Alan Wiley keeps his hands behind his back. And uh, just when West Ham perhaps thought they would get a corner for the uh, deflection off ground, free kick given against Kitson. one from uh, Dean Kiley who's uh, proved his worth with one save already De Canio given away to Parker Here's Jason Newell Mark Fish Link up. Good run by Fish, looking for Yule with a cross, but it's uh, Repka away. Luke Young. It's slightly important if Johansson does drift into those wide areas like he did then, but uh, midfield players look to get into the box, otherwise they're always going to be short in their Charlton. Young. No 
corner. Now it wasn't the last touch, so the officials felt. seven league contests against uh, Charlton that was a 5-0 home victory on Boxing Day their best result ever against tonight's opponents looking for a volunteer to take the free kick and it's Konczewski who steps forward and Kinsella himself is going to take it Brown is forward Fish was climbing and it almost ran to Yule and does in the end and he equalises it's skimmed back to him off the West Ham head and Jason Yule draws Charlton level Well, it's the West Ham player who gets the flick. I'm sure that Shaka Hisler should have done better with this. Yule misses his first attempt. I think that's possibly confused Hislop. He doesn't handle it well. Gives Yule the second opportunity. And he's not going to miss from two yards. Well, a calamitous goal for West Ham to concede. But in the 21st minute, Charlton have drawn level. It was Christian Daly's back header in the first place that put you all through and Hislop didn't deal convincingly with the first effort gave you all a second bite at the cherry and as they did against Arsenal Charlton have come from a goal down It's come off a West Ham head, can't be in an offside position, and uh, Yule kept his composure well. It's the first goal he scored at home for his new club, Jason Yule. It's his fourth of the season since his uh, four and a half million pound move from Wimbledon. And Hutchison with a clear handball. Rob, I think there were two players who were actually offside, but uh, the only thing I would say is I'm not so sure that the lines would, would actually realise that it was off the West Ham player. So the decision is right. The goal should stand. And I would think that when the linesman sees it, he'd be mightily relieved that it was a West Ham player, because otherwise it should have been flagged for offside. But the goal was good. And the offside flag is again stayed down as Powell goes through. Hislop comes out, does what he can to prevent Powell from scoring. Well, was this a foul? Well, I think Hislop realised that he was just outside the penalty box. He couldn't go in with his hands. It's a great run from Chris Powell. I think he was a little bit fortunate there, Hislop, that he didn't concede a free kick. And being the last man, of course, that would have been a sending off offence. More pressure on his goal again now as the header goes wide. Jason Yule again lurking. Well, Charlton are asking one or two questions. And certainly West Ham are not looking comfortable when they're put under pressure. And sensing that, Charlton looking to cap their recovery with a second goal. It's Konczewski to take the corner. And selling the player underneath it. Still not convincingly away by Repka. This is Luke Young. Now Johansson. Jason Ewell. And Sellers made a move in the box, but it's over his head. And his lock finds Kitson. Here's Carey. Oh. 
Daly. Minto. Carrick. Away by Brown. Carrick. Daly. Fish. Sullivan warned about the arrival of Kitts, who finds Paul Koncheski, now Powell, Klaus Jensen, and again Jensen moves, it's Parker, and it's well wide from him this time, that decision a few moments ago when Shaka Hislop came out and clashed with Chris Powell could have been a pivotal moment of the match. Well I think it was definitely outside the box Rob, wasn't it? Let's have another look. Well, was there a determination there for him, his lot that if he didn't get the ball, he was going to get the man? I think his lot realised that he was outside the box, decided he couldn't come and punch it. That was his first intentions. He was coming for the punch. Now, did he push Chris Pell in the back? I don't think that's conclusive. I really don't. I think the referee probably got it right. Certainly if he felt that it was a foul, but he would have to have sent him off. Here's Scott Parker. Carrick. Trevor Sinclair. Long for uh, Decanio. start to the game by West Ham as they uh, got the early goal just on the three minute mark the Charlton have moved ahead of them since in terms of the attempts they've had at least yes I think prior to the game I think it was quite clear that whoever won this game put a little bit of daylight between themselves and the bottom teams and I think the intentions were very positive from both managers both of them have come here to play attacking football to try and win this game well a victory for either would take them out of the bottom six Lukian's throw just the wrong side to take it on board but trouble here for Repka Johansson takes it away Yule gets in the shot and it's 2-1 and Jason Yule single-handedly has turned it around but it's another disastrous goal for West Ham and Repka in particular to concede what was Repka thinking of I cannot believe it in his own penalty box he's dribbling the ball but that's an excellent finish from Yule he beats his lap on his near post far too easily. His lap gets his position all wrong. That's too easy. Should be beaten like that in the near post. Give credit to you. He finished it in style. But really, that's a particularly bad goal for West Ham to concede. That should have gone from Repka right up into the stand. His first touch was awful. He went a good four or five yards away from him and presented the opportunity to Charlton. Uh, these London derby matches are always fiercely contested. There's been a dispute over the award of a, of a throw-in, which eventually went in Charlton's favour. But uh, West Ham have got to be careful not to lose their heads. They've got enough problems as it is already continuing their poor run of conceding goals away from home they have already conceded 16 in their last four away games before this but they could get one back here and Kitson has two for Yule, two for Kitson and West Ham a level well you're not going to see a better goal than that all season 
The build-up was absolutely magnificent. Just have a look at this pass from Di Canio. Wonderful. Possibly the ball from Minzo is even better. Played in behind the defender. He's played from Minzo with his left foot. Shaped in behind Fish. Kitson onto it. Both strikers on a hat trick. Kitson two, Yule two. Yes, those two strikers reaching the point at which they might get a hat trick within the first half hour of the game. So a personal duel between them now as to who can get that achievement first. Cracking return to the valley though for Paul Kitson and a goal that was absolutely vital to settle West Ham down. They've conceded two bad goals, but Kitson now has given them genuine hope. They mentioned they must keep their heads, De Canio foremost amongst those who has to keep his temper under control. Luke Young, header away by Daly. De Canio, Scott Parker. Combines with Jensen, now Johansson. Can he set it up for a Yule hat trick? He's got there! And Hislop will save with his legs. Well, that's a foul. But Yule could have had his hat trick by now, but for that man, Shaka Hislop. We're certainly seeing some good passing tonight, Rob. This is a ball from Johansson, similar to the ball that Mintel played in behind Repka. Yule chooses to play it with his right foot, could have gone with his left. Goes with his right, instinct save with his right foot from his lot. Saves the day for West Ham. Klaus Jensen of Charlton becomes the latest subject of player cam for Sky Digital viewers on Channel 404. For the remainder of this half. Good well, things are happening that quickly here. If we just refer back to the goal that uh, West Ham scored, I was right in line with De Canio. He was being closed down by three players and he was running along the halfway line. And my first thoughts were, if he loses this ball now, he's in trouble. He's got to drop it off to one of the central defenders, play it easy, not De Canio. He's played an absolutely magnificent ball in behind. I think it was uh, Luke Young for the advance in Minto. It really was a superb pass. Kinczewski with a free kick. Fish with a header! And Hislop with a save! Great ball in from Kinczewski. Fish onto it. Out jumps Hutchinson. Little flick. Brilliant save from Hislop. Every time the ball goes in the box, it's threatening a goal. Jensen has lost out to Trevor Sinclair, and he's made up some good ground here. The Canio has got forward in support, and Kitson carried it there as well. Jensen, though, has done a good job. Now, power breaking with it as the action swings from end to end at the moment. Well, it was uh, betwixt and between Parker and Young, and the referee has played an advantage there despite the foul on Scott Parker. And I wonder if there might be further action to be taken. I think you're right, Rob. It was a late challenge from Minto, and I think the referee quite correctly playing the advantage rule. As soon as the ball was out of play, I think he'll give a booking to Minto, and rightly so. Good play this from Yule. Beyond Johansson, he's done so much good work in the build up, it was the end product that let him down. Here's Sinclair. Uh, gone out and referees need memories like elephants at times don't they when the ball stays in for so long after an incident but Alan Wiley knew what was uh, happening kept his eye on the situation and has indeed shown the yellow card to Scott Minto I think Scott Parker saw the challenge come in and uh, actually hurdled over Minto I don't think he actually made contact but uh, Certainly the intent was there and uh, no complaints I wouldn't have thought about the uh, yellow card. 
Although Paolo Di Canio had one or two words with the referee, but that's expected. Alan oh, Wiley would expect that. <laughs> Jens. Kinsella. Jensen. Yule. Here's one more close in the end to take it. Yes, it looks straightforward that shot from you, but um, I think that was deflected. I think it took a slight deflection. Yes, it seemed a wicked bend on it, one way or another. Here's Konchesky. Powell. Uh, seems a permanent swap now with Konchesky staying at left back and Powell pushing on. Yes, yes it does, and also uh, Luke Young is more or less playing in midfield on the right hand side there for uh, for Cholton. Fox. Here's Kinsella. Now Young. Kinsella. Paul Konchesky. Fox has to try and get it away, and that was one that could have gone anywhere. He's got an excellent foot, this young lad, Konchesky. He plays that into the danger area. Fox stretching, could have gone anywhere. Fortunately for him, it goes over the crossbar. Konchesky delivers. Beyond fish this time, headed away by Hutchison. Young. Riding with uh, Sinclair. And Sella. Klaus Jensen. Johansson takes it on board. How do you interpret that? <laughs> he's annoyed with someone, I would guess, and his colleagues. Don't know quite what for, though. Jensen. Fish and Kinsella too close to each other in the end. And neither could make the most of the opportunity. Young. Jensen. Away by Minto. That's another useful spell for Charlton. Come from behind once to lead. Only to see West Ham cancel out their advantage. Sinclair. And there's a little too much time there, which allowed Sinclair to get away. And he set up Kitson for the hat-trick if he can get through. Calvo comes across and makes the tackle. And what a vital tackle it was. Uh, Looked on there for the headline grabbing moment from Paul Kitson. He sets one up now for the Canio. You can't take your eye off this game, can you, for one second? This is how uh, London Derby should be. Plenty of passion out there without the uh, the venom that we saw in the uh, North London affair two days ago. But it's uh, well contested. Sellers minus his boot at the moment. Cleared by Konchesky. Fox looking to watch it back. Always let it bounce, which is always a risk. And Yule over. Well, Fox there didn't defend that particularly well. You allowed the ball to drop, should have cleared it, never allowed it to drop. You along to it. If only he'd seen his lob six yards off his line, he could have lobbed him. Well, West Ham's defensive frailties have been all too readily exposed. But what continues to give them hope is the way they're building up in this area of the field. 
it's unfortunate there the uh, way the ball broke off Kitson and the move broke down but they're a threat every time they go forward Hayden Fox could have been with Australia now their World Cup playoff against Uruguay we're showing you the first leg of that live on Sky Sports 1 tomorrow at 9 o'clock but if you're not around to see that you will be able to catch the highlights later on Sky Sports 1 at 7 o'clock Fox was initially in the uh, standby squad got a call up when Lucas Neal of Blackburn was injured but then got this groin injury and Australia didn't ask for uh, independent medical confirmation they were quite happy to accept West Ham's version of events and uh, the scan on the groin problem because they've always enjoyed a good relationship with the club in the past Fox on now to uh, Di Canio and Fox gets forward this time beats Brown works it through is it going to fall for Minto? Well, uh, almost a case of too many cooks spoiling the broth, and Di Canio could still pull it back here. Well, haphazard defending, to say the least, by Charlton, for whom Steve Brown is still down injured, and the referee halts play to allow him to get treated. Yes, I think uh, Mr. Wiley believes it's a head injury, and I think he's right. So, uh, stopped it. What about the defending here, Rob? Number of opportunities to get the ball away. Three or four attempts, then they finally kick it to Di Canio. He can't control it right, gets it back in the box. Second attempt, Carly gets it under control. Both sides have defended very, very poorly. Kitson, he's certainly a live wire tonight and uh, almost got his hat trick here. Lovely one two again, Sinclair and Di Canio. Now, is this a foul? No, I don't think so. He tries to get his body in front of. Chris Powell hasn't got quite got the pace. You can see there quite clearly Powell gets the ball. Kitson wanted a free kick. But once again, the referee's got it right. Got a renowned for his sportsmanship. After uh, events at Everton last season, and he has given the ball back to... Uh, Dean Kiley, as you would expect of the West Ham captain. Repco with the header away. Sinclair loses his footing. Yes. Kinsella. Scott Parker. Now Brown, who's uh, recovered from that blow to the head. Kincheski. Scott Parker. Klaus Jens. Young bringing it under control. And finding Chris Powell, who's got Yule and Johansson both waiting in the middle. Johansson goes for the rebound, but again Yule denied his hat-trick by Shaka Hislop. Just have a look at the marker in the pony box here. Who's supposed to be marking Yule? That's awful marking. Really Yule, he couldn't believe how much space he gets. Pell sticks it on his head. Hislop, good save, but really he should have been allowed to make the save. That should have been Yule's hat-trick. But once again, marking dreadful. And looking to help it back across towards Fish. Cleared to Parker. His first touch gives Sinclair the opportunity to clear, which he takes. Now to Canio. Kitson has gone on a break. And Powell blocks the ball that was intended for him. And then blocks to Canio, who doesn't surprisingly get the free kick. Johansson. Yes. Kinsella. Then you the target. Fox makes it this time. Parker. Away by Carrick to Kitson. Sinclair. Repka. Shemel. Sinclair.
away by Fox. To Canio, he's lost out to Jason Yule. Although he tried unselfishly there to put it on a plate for Johansson and it didn't come off. Kitson. Paolo Di Canio. Jensen given away by Di Canio for the second time in quick succession. Last time it was Yule, this time it's Jensen. But again, they get the final ball roll. This time have been on the back foot for the most part. Be two minutes of stoppage time added on in this first half. Here's Parker. Challenged by Minto. Mark Kinsella. Parker looks to play it across. Yule. Let's get the better of uh, Shevin in terms of reaching in, but couldn't direct the header. And then Hislop wastes another ball. Acknowledges his error to Schemmel. Jens. Luke Young. Jansen. Sinclair looking to help it on into the path of Schemmel this time. Carrick. Half time. This has not been a masterclass in defending, but it's been a thoroughly entertaining London derby in which Paul Kitson has scored twice on his return to the valley. Either side of a double from Jason Yule, and both players could have had their hat tricks by now. But at half time here at the valley, it's Charlton 2, West Ham 2. Terrific entertainment, and am I the only one that thinks there probably are more goals in this? 2-2 <laughs> at half time at the Valley. This is the entertaining London derby, isn't it? Goals galore to date. And his thoughts when we come back. Two two it is, two on a hat trick. Let's rejoin Trevor Francis and Rob Hawthorne. Paul Kitson and uh, Jason Yule, those uh, players on a hat-trick. Kitson, who incidentally is out of contract at the end of the season, so he's very much in the shop window tonight and doing himself justice. Kitson enjoyed being in the spotlight of player cam. I wonder if Don Hutchison will too. He's in the focus of Sky Digital viewers on Channel 404. So, two all in this uh, compelling FA Barker Card Premiership clash at the Valley. West Ham get the second half underway. This is Christian Daly. Both managers, I'm sure, would welcome a more pragmatic approach, certainly defensively, in the second 45 minutes. Parker. Johansson with a header down to Jason Yule. And now here's Mark Fitch. This is uh, part of a run of four London derbies in five league games. They beat Chelsea and lost to Fulham in the ones they've already played. And uh, after this, they've got Tottenham at home on Saturday. Steve Brown, now Carrick. And this is Repka. 
Schemmel to Sinclair. To Canio. Making another great ball through to Schemmel. Kitson looking to get on the end of it. And Fish has to get across there with him. Well, the second half started as the first finished. Great attack and play. Lovely ball from Schemmel. Kitson almost onto it. But Fish just gets here in the nick of time. With his head. We're just talking about the two sides, Rob, and uh, what's been going on half time quite clearly. Certainly, the challenge dressing room, there's been uh, a change in tactics. I think now they're going with three at the back, with uh, Koncheski coming back to play on the left hand side, Brown in the centre, Fish on the right, Pell and Young are the wing backs. There's Koncheski climbing behind Sinclair, Hutchison. Minto. Fish. Young. Ball by Hayden Fox. Franceschi. Steve Brown looking for Johansson. It's come off uh, Rutgers' head. And it's a ball for Charlton. <laughs> Brown and Fish have uh, come forward for Jensen's corner. taken by Shaka Hislop and Chesky Carrick Fox Minto Mark Kinsella this is his uh, 200th league game for Charlton tonight. Now uh, Jensen. And Sarah, who's uh, given such good service since his move here from Colchester. And Sarah again. Tightest of angles onto the roof of the net in the end. Yes, he was certainly running out of space, wasn't he, on the field? Fish sends him wide, but nothing's impossible with this guy's on the ball. He knew exactly what he was trying to do. He saw Kylie at the near post, trying to lift it over him to the far post. Of course, he wouldn't put anything past this man, Paolo Di Canio. Scored a good goal here last of January in West Ham's one all draw. And he was uh, Charlton's tormentor in the 5 year win for West Ham at Upton Park. Great chance here, Johansson! And Charlton are back in front. Johansson's third of the season. Well, defending in midfield is poor for West Ham. Parker plays a lovely little ball in behind Fox. His lock comes out. Johansson's got the choice of either going around him, but he just slots it underneath it into the empty net. It's a lovely goal for Charlton, well taken by Johansson. Jonathan Johansson, who was the uh, top scorer for Charlton last season with uh, 14 goals, 11 of them in the Premiership, has registered his third of this campaign, and his second since the uh, opening day of the season.
Everton in front for the second time in this game. They only held the lead for two minutes last time before Kitson equalised. Can they hold on to what they have now? Johansson the target again, and there was a little push by him on Redka. It was good play from Parker, you know, Rob. I think West Ham, certainly the management team, would like to have seen a little bit more resistance in the middle of the park. It was too easy the way that Parker came away with, with the ball. But then he waited for the movement, and he got it from Johansson. He made a little run in behind Fox. And as his slot came out to close him down, he slotted it with ease past him. at the moment it's a victory that would take Charlton up to uh, 13th place in the table which would be a significant improvement for Alan Kirby's this team after a difficult start to this season the worst start they've made in the uh, Premiership incidentally all just beyond the reach of uh, Chris Powell Trevor Sinclair and finding it. Away by Kincheski. Troubling for Charlton that they're getting deeper and deeper and West Ham are looking more and more threatening again, replicating what happened last time they had the lead. This is Minto looking to get through. It's a great run from him and he's found Paul Kitson. Just too many bodies there for him to get his shot through. Oh, that's a good run from Minto. Picked out Kitson well. If only Kitson had realised that on his outside was Paolo Di Cagno totally free in the penalty box. couldn't take it on this is Daly Sinclair going for it against Paul Konczewski by him to Powell Konczewski Parker Kinsella Jensen jumping with Minto and winning the battle and the break on here for Jensen it's Luke Young with three in the middle to his left Luke Young goes for it saw the possibility of his first ever goal at club level but it didn't happen once again the break right through the middle of the park it's like knife going through butter exposing West Ham in the centre Luke Young comes back onto his left foot strikes it not on target the problem's in the centre of the field Rob I think that uh, they've got to get a holding player in there, someone who can just give a little bit of protection to the back three, who obviously are desperately in need of it. Paul Konczewski. Fish. Luke Young. to shrug off Hutchison he's lined it up for Scott Parker who's got Powell out to his left and Yule just to his right here's the 
is Chris Powell. The head of Repka. Another corner to Charlton. Comfortable moments for the uh, West Ham defence as Jensen bends in another one. Powell hits it against Sinclair for the throw. Chesky with the back pass. Here's Steve Brown. Ripper away. room in the end and ran into uh, Thomas Repka. They had support there from Shemel. All credit to Parker who didn't give up on it. Well, I think what he's attempting to do there, Rob, was to shove the ball through the legs of uh, Repka. And this time a year ago, Scott Parker was playing in the first division. He was uh, on loan at Norwich to extend his experience. Here's De Canio. Sinclair with Schemmel up on the outside of him. Sinclair trying to get round Kincheski. Sell her away. <laughs> Referee plays on. There may have been a foul there by Rector on Yule, but a good advantage. Luke Young. Johansson out wide. Yule on his own in the area for Charlton. And two players coming across in the end to uh, deny Young the opportunity to cross. Daly and Minto preventing him from doing so. Yes, I think uh, Luke Young rather runs down a blind alley here. Tries to go in between the two West Ham defenders. Absolutely no future in that run. And the ball just shepherded out of play for a goal kick. Just talking about uh, Parker who went to Norwich. If you look at the two players who have been very evident in this game. Michael Carrick, he had a couple of spells at uh, Swindon and then Birmingham. And Parker at Norwich. I think when they're young, Rob, it's good for their experience, good for their growing up process, gives them the opportunity to play more regular. And I think the football clubs, West Ham and Charlton, have certainly benefited from it. Both now part of the uh, England under-21 setup. Indeed, Carrick got the uh, goal against Holland that uh, clinched England's place in the European Championship. Possible substitutions here by uh, Glenn Roder. Steve Lomas is all set to uh, come on after. A long layoff, and Joe Cole, another possible introduction. Free kick taken by Kinsella, headed away by Hutchison. This is Klaus Jensen. Ah. Magnificently there to work it through towards Fish. All are given. leaving the kick for Kincheski to take as Hansen is among those waiting to benefit from the uh, service of another another 21 squad man cleared by Kitson this time Sinclair and a change of player for player cam Jason Yule can be followed now by Sky Digital viewers on channel 404 period in which he gets his hat-trick. Here's Carrick. Sinclair looking to get on the end of it, but Kylie was always a favourite. 
There's a couple of uh, new players shortly to be introduced, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me either if there's a change of shape in the side. Fox. We mentioned it's in that uh, midfield area where West Ham have been struggling to contain Charlton. I think they may actually forfeit one of the centre halves as well, Rob. You know, between the three of them, they've not looked convincing at all at the back. But we'll see. Scott Minto is uh, one of the players going off. And on in his place comes Steve Lomas, who played in West Ham's 5 0 win against Charlton on Boxing Day, and then two league games later suffered a bad cruciate ligament injury that at one stage seemed to threaten his career. So it's partly to see Lomas back in action tonight. And Joe Cole has had his fitness problems this season, but he's coming on now to take the place of Don Hutchison. Cole, who's lined up for a full run out in the reserves tomorrow, but he's going to get just under half an hour here, having had a, a foot problem, a bruised bone, but seen him having hydrotherapy treatment, amongst other things. It's De Canio. Here's Sebastian Schemmel. Cole. Canio. Skimmed off the head of Fish. Kitson looked to rescue it and it has been and he's done it. Kitson on his return to the valley has got his hat trick. Once again, not particularly distinguished defending from Charlton on this occasion. Paolo Di Canio, as you'd expect, he's been involved in everything. Just teases the, the child of the face, plays at the back post. Well, that's the simplest goal that Kitson's going to score. There's the flick from Fish. I think Kocheski probably could have done better at the far post. No fault of the keeper. But Kitson tucks it away. What a good substitution. Yes, yeah, so and not bad for a player who would not have been in the starting lineup had Freddie Canute been available for West Ham United. Paul Kitson, the makeshift striker, scores a hat trick on his return to the valley. And again, that's ebbed and flowed. There may be more dramatic twists to come. Fox takes the decision out of his goalkeeper's hands, and West Ham get away with it. Now is the momentum with the visitors, especially after those two changes. This man Cole, freshly introduced. Schemmel riding the challenge from Powell. Christian Daly. Cole. Schemmel. That's a dreadful challenge. That is a bad challenge from Schemmel. No attempt to play the ball. He overruns it. That is awful. <laughs> Trevor Sinclair and Paolo Di Canio have uh, spoken to Alan Wiley urging leniency from him yellow card though perhaps the least he could have expected that was a good professional Chris Powell yes it could have been worse Uh, Powell back on his feet, not as bad as it uh, might have been. Here's by Repka. Here's Jensen. 
second center. Jensen with a flick, and he's found Scott Parker. Finds himself crowded out. Sinclair, now Joe Cole. Furthest West Ham player forward, although Di Canio out to his left is getting forward in support. And Chesky blocks him off in the end. Jensen. Now Jason Yule, can he match Paul Kitson's achievement? He's the other player on a hat-trick. Luke Young. That's Paul. Good run from Luke Young. Caught young Joe Cole, Cole watching here, played him behind him, gets in too easily. And Paul Konczewski with a corner. Oh, looks a free header, and Kinsella kicks the post in frustration because he couldn't apply the finishing touch that was so desperately required. Clear to Di Canio. How close to that was Mark Kinsella? Well, he actually made contact, Rob. Kinczewski gets it back across his free, Johansson! And Robka arrived in the nick of time. I tell you, they're defending, they're all over the place. Kinsella couldn't believe how much space he had, neither there could Johansson. Really, Charlton should have scored on the two occasions. Luke Young lifts it over as the corner is cleared to him. Another remarkable sequence of events in front of the West Ham goal. As they hang on grimly. This is the chance for Kinsella. Totally free in the box. Doesn't make full contact. Skids off his head. Should have given Charlton the lead. Actually seemed to hit his own man, Jason Yule. Chesky. Brown. Now Powell. Fox. This is Cole. It's a push by Parker. It's a quick opportunity, Rob, to tell you that uh, West Ham have gone to a four at the back with Daly played as the left back. Centre of the midfield for West Ham. Lomas and uh, Carrick are giving a little bit more protection now to the back four. Lomas now looks to pull it across and Fish has to deal with it. Kitson has closed him down, no foul. And Kitson can pull it back across here, but it's blocked. Schemmel. Away by Fish. We've well, seen evidence of last ditch defending by both teams. Now desperation about the defending at times. Cleared by Cole. That's it for uh, Paul Kitson, as well as being his third of the season, third league goal of the season. And it's the uh, first time that he scored a hat trick since May 1997 for West Ham against Sheffield Wednesday which was also the last time any West Ham player scored a hat-trick in the Premiership and yet having scored the hat-trick he could in theory still finish on the losing side it's still finely balanced at the moment Di Canio pulls it across here and Sinclair unable to get there Schemmel gets it across, Kitson's there again that ball is like a magnet to him. Every time it comes in the box, he seems to be on to it. What a ball. This is from Di Canio. Sinclair comes in, makes a good run. Almost gets there. Shemo wastes no time. Back into the box. Kitson. Well, everything's gone right for him tonight. Can't quite direct that one on target, but he's done enough for his team. You can't ask any more than a hat trick, can you? I don't have any of those 
attempts are belonging to uh, Paul Kitson. There have been six on target in total for them. But it's been a remarkable comeback into the first team for a player who was loaned out to Charlton and Crystal Palace. Not then as though his uh, West Ham career might be over. But he has come back with a vengeance tonight. Laid off by Brown, didn't quite come off for Charlton. Now De Canio. Joe Cole, Kitson again. Set up, fish. Carrick. His box. Joe Cole. It's too long for Sebastian Schemmel. Wasn't necessary either, was it? One or two easier options. He elected to play the crossfield ball all of 50 yards. There's Mark Kinsella, challenged by Lomas. De Canio. And he's delayed and delayed because uh, Kitson was possibly in an offside position, but he's won the free kick. Got on with the taking of it and found Joe Cole who spreads it to Daly. Kitson again is in the middle with Sinclair. And Kitson gets it back across. Chris Powell who gets it away. I do believe the two substitutions made a good effect on the West Ham team, Rob. But they needed that extra player in the centre of the park who had defensive uh, qualities. Certainly Lomas is holding the better position. Carrot playing slightly deeper. Of course, they've got the inventiveness now with Joe Cole in there. He's run by Young. And Johansson gets it back across to him. And an important tackle. Timed well by Michael Carrick. Once again, another determined run. Johansson puts it into Young. And he looks to have uh, possibly strained his hamstring, or is that a little bit of cramp? Kincheski's ball in. His lock uh, having to be strong there against Fish. Jansen just lost the flight of it then, and it's reached Trevor Sinclair. Steve Lomas. Schemmel. De Canio looking to bring it under control. Brown got it away and found Johansson. Now Klaus Jensen. Schemmel caught him. And into the last quarter of an hour. With the game still finally poised. Rob with uh, one or two tired legs now. It must be a consideration for uh, Glen Roder to put on uh, Defoe. And how do you take off the Kanyu or Kitson? The Kanyu's been excellent. Kitson's on a hat trick. Very difficult to make that substitution, but it must be a consideration for him. What sort of uh, reception Jermaine Defoe would uh, get here having left as a schoolboy in controversial circumstances West Ham having had to uh, pay a fee of compensation for him to a charter that could climb to over a million and a half after uh, he makes a senior England debut he's already done really well in the under 21s of course
Turquia. And he's trying to play for the corner there against Christian Daly. He didn't get a touch, and again, Young feeling that injury. Question is being answered about the sort of reception that Jermaine Defoe would get on his return to the valley. He um, said he expected some sort of stick, and he's getting it. And Judas uh, has the cry. Well, it is Paul Kitson, the hat trick hero, who's uh, going to make way. And uh, I suppose you'd say good management of the way and that he can uh, get the send-off that he deserves. But there's still an important part to be played in this game as West Ham seek out the winner. The uh, Charlton fans giving a hostile reception to Jermaine Defoe, who never broke through into the uh, first team here. He left too early to have done that. We were talking earlier about uh, players loaned out to gain experience, and he did so in the grand manner at uh, Bournemouth. Where he had that record run of scoring in ten consecutive games. Schemmel here wins the corner. Yeah, I think the substitution makes sense, Rob, because the throw is very, very quick. As I said, one or two tied legs. We don't quite know what the general fitness is. Of Kitson, he looked to be tiring a little bit, he's done his job. Oh, well people. behind in terms of the corner count, but their third will be taken by Di Canio. And it's cleared by Jason Yule. Parker away. He's actually fallen over, and that was a heavy collision with the hoarding for Scott Parker. And uh, Glenn Road is showing his uh, immediate concern for the opposing player. That was a heavy, heavy clash. He's into it uh, with his left knee making the initial impact, and he's uh, still off the field as West Ham continue a build-up looking for a goal that could win this uh, seesaw match. Jermaine Defoe finding Cole. Carrick. Sinclair. And away by Kincheski. The crowd are not happy with Sinclair's throw-ins, are they? That's the second occasion they've showed it for a foul throw. Uh, Scott Parker's injury, not as bad as might have been feared. Oh, we're saying it's uh, evenly poised, and look how much of it has been played in the midfield. Charlton with a slight edge on the offensive. Luke Young to Johansson. That's a broken off for Christian Daly for the throw-in. So I saw it was at a corner. I think the uh, decision has been given as a corner. Kincheski's going over. Yes, it's a corner. Yeah. Just give the taker. Away by Lomas. This is Yule. So again, all the way back. Here's Paolo Di Canio. Cole. for Christian Daly to get across. Here by Brown. Now Parker has given it back to Sinclair. To 
Bo Shamel to Canio Lomas Second in deflection on his way through, and Carly can't prevent the corner. Well, that would have been interesting, wouldn't it? If he'd been on target. Took a wicked deflection, spinning away from Kylie. He can't quite get to it. <laughs> Paolo De Canio to take the corner for West Ham. Fox standing right in front of the goalkeeper. Corner's pulled out instead to Michael Carrick. Shot down well by Luke Young. His lock. And away by Brown, who had the foe moving in just behind him. Incidentally, it was uh, nothing to do with the fear of the reception he might get that uh, persuaded Glenn Roder to kick Paul Kitson ahead of Jermaine Defoe to partner Paolo Di Canio from the outset more to do with the uh, balance of his strike force and certainly his decision was well vindicated with a hat-trick that uh, Kitson has got and still Defoe has the opportunity to make a name for himself in his return here and here is that moment and he takes it Jermaine Defoe on his return to the valley after his controversial departure here scores what could be a winner on his old stamping ground well you just knew it didn't you as the ball fell to him it had to be something special it was a right foot volley but he was up for it the technique was there it gets deflected he looks at it takes his time it's a beautiful volley but that's good play from Daly De Canio wanted an easy ball given to him Daly was nice and positive goes at Luke Young stands it up it takes a deflection falls invitingly to Young Defoe there's a long time to look at it gets his body in the right position lovely body shape and a terrific volley to give West Ham the lead but can they hold on to it? Well each team has now held the lead twice Charlton get back into it again. Klaus Jensen, it deflects on its way through. And Hislop watches it go away for the corner. And Alan Kirbishley hopes that perhaps a substitution might have the same impact for him that Defoe's had for West Ham. Robinson is poised to come on. And so too Sean Bartlett. Luke Young is one of those coming off. And John Robinson coming on for him. And before the corner is taken, the other substitution is also now taking place. Scott Parker is going off, and Sean Bartlett, who scored in the one all draw against West Ham here in January, comes on to replace him. Can he score in a four-all draw here? That's what uh, Charlton are praying for. Konczewski's corner, Bartlett goes in for his first touch and certainly disturbed Hislop. Kinsella with a blast! And blocked from in front of Shaq and Hislop as Charlton calls more mayhem. Well, Hislop comes for it. He really should have caught it. I think it's Bartley who gets up, gets the challenge in. Not cleared with any distance from Repka. Falls to Kinsella. Free shot at goal. Daly it was who blocked the eventual effort and uh, Jason Ewell being shown the yellow card. Yes, he certainly committed the free kick. It was a foul, but I can only imagine that that's for dissent.
substitution that may turn out to have been from Glenn Roder who checks his watch Jermaine Defoe who came on and scored a late goal that won the match at Ipswich to earn West Ham their first away victory of the season could possibly have done it again Here's Johansson. Over the top. Should have done better there. Not particularly good defending from Fox. Allows Johansson in on his left foot. Two against two in the box. Not a good delivery. Goes behind the goal. Relieves the pressure for West Ham. It's Jensen. Robinson, Koncheski, he all gets it all wrong, and it's Carrick. Jason Yule. All the way through for Kinsella. De Canio. It's Jermaine Defoe again, furthest player forward, still the Gears ring around the valley he's made them pay once already here's Sinclair here's De Canio Paolo De Canio works his magic but Kylie had read the danger well well we've seen some brilliant goals tonight but that would have cut it all brilliant play from De Canio surrounded by three players no teammate came to give him support he had to go alone and he almost did it by himself Helped into the path of Johansson. Remke had got across to narrow the angle. World Cup action coming up for you tomorrow on Sky Sports 1 with the first leg playoff of Australia against Uruguay. You can see it live from 9 o'clock in the morning. And if you missed that, there is the opportunity to catch the highlights. Sky Sports 1, 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. Flick on by Bartlett. Sean Bartlett again, he's freed John Robinson. Good defending by Daly, who got across just in time. Yes, it was a timely tackle from Daly. West Ham on two occasions in the air, had the opportunity to get it away. Fox out jumped, then Repco jumped. Koncheski. Yule and Bartlett were both in there. Cleared in the end by Sinclair to Sebastian Schemmel. Jermaine Defoe. De Canio. Kinsella. Klaus Jensen. This is John Robinson. Mark Kinsella. This is Kincheski. Moving into injury time, of which there will be four minutes. So still plenty of time for Charlton to draw themselves level. Johansson gets it across, they stood looking at it. And in the end it was Schemmel who got it clear. And in doing so found his own man Joe Cole. No initial urgency from him, although he again tries to pick out De Canio with an ambitious ball that Brown easily cuts out. This is Fish. Looking for Johansson, who's trying to guide it into the path of Jason Yule without success cleared by Repka Alan Kervishley one time West Ham player an FA Youth Cup finalist with them back in 1975 85 league appearances for the club but on the brink of losing to them here unless his team can get an equaliser in the injury time that remains held back by Fisher to equalise from Johansson, his second of the night and it's 4-4, remarkable once again West Ham don't deal with it in the air that's been their Achilles heel all night they failed to get it away but you've got to applaud that that is absolutely wonderful finishing fantastic bit of agility from Johansson it's back to goal overhead kick Absolutely top class.
They were just a couple of minutes away from being defeated by one of their old boys, an old boy who never made it into the first team because he was so young when he left, even though the manner of his departure was controversial. But Johansson could have rescued at least a point, and it might be more. Who knows which way this remarkable game will swing yet? Still a couple of minutes left for either side to find a winner. Sinclair. And away by Bartlett. Then Rhoda checks the watch again. Can scarcely believe what's happened. This team keeping up their unfortunate recent average of conceding four goals per game away from home. This is Joe Cole. Trying to wind his way through into the area. De Canio looks to lay it on the plate again for Defoe. Kylie comes to claim it. Daly. Fox has to try and hold off Johansson. And the free kick is given to the West Ham player. They were living on their nerves a bit then. Can you imagine the emotions that Alan Kirby and Glenn Rhoda have gone through tonight? Must be difficult for them to enjoy, but as uh, neutrals, it's been a, a thrilling spectacle. Christian Daly. And Kinsella has lost out, and Joe Cole could be through here. Daly now tries to force it into the Canio's path, but he's conceded the free kick as Christian Daly. And Charlton, glad of the respite, although obviously concerned for Fish. It really has been a remarkable game. In one way, you don't want to see a loser, do you? All the players have played their part. It's been some outstanding performances. So has the referee too, Alan Wiley. He probably won't get a mention, but he's done well tonight. Is there yet a late dramatic winner? Robinson tries to pull it back, but the flag up for offside against him. the end of a remarkable London derby in which honours have finished even but stories wherever you look a hat-trick for Paul Kitson who wouldn't have played had Freddie Canute been fit two for Jason Yule a goal for Jermaine Defoe on his return to the valley after his controversial departure to West Ham and two goals for Jonathan Johansson each team held the lead twice but then couldn't hold on to it in a real nip and tuck encounter Kitson got the first then Charlton with two one up it was two all three two to Charlton four three to West Ham four all with Johansson's late equaliser and plenty more chances as well in a game that has been thoroughly absorbing for the neutrals a point each at the end of it for these two London rivals but it's a game that will certainly live in the memory Jason Ewell scoring his first goals at the Valley and playing his part in a really entertaining night here that's finished Charlton 4, West Ham 4.